All right, guys, we are less than a month away from the giveaway, so don't forget to go get entered. All you gotta do is go to our off-road recovery video. It's off-road recovery plus giveaway. Leave a comment. Make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel and you're following us on Instagram. We'll have links in the bio for everything and we'll have the giveaway video tagged on this video as well. Go get entered, May 3rd. We're gonna do a live stream to choose the winner. It's gonna be awesome. And Welcome back to another episode, guys. Now, originally, we weren't gonna put out a video this week. Um, I've been brainstorming some ideas for rear bumper on the pickup, rock sliders, and some other cool parts. But um, I figured it'd be kind of fun if we did a budget video. So we're gonna do a budget, budget onboard air. This is pretty budget for me because I have most of the stuff laying around in the shop, whether it's from old projects or just stuff that I already bought for off-roading. Most of it you're probably gonna have to buy unless you're like me and you're kind of a hoarder. <laughs> so I put this nice weather guard on the back of here a little bit ago and I've been filling it with recovery tools and stuff. Shelby and I are gonna come up with a way to organize this, probably using milk crates or whatnot. But down here in the corner, down in the corner here, they have a little outlet. And that's, they call it their power point, so they can run a power cords in and out of your box and whatnot. I thought that'd be perfect for me to throw an air tank in here, and then my little air compressor in here as well, so I can have that air tank, and then I can put an air chuck um, in the side or the front somewhere maybe just here my whole idea is um, every time I get done wheeling if I don't trailer this or if we're snow wheeling and running really low tire pressure I don't want to drive it back to um, either the house or drive it to a gas station to fill the tires up so filling up your tires onboard air is really helpful um, my idea is for me to take the compressor out, hook it to my batteries, set it all up, air up all my tires, and then put it all away. Just kind of a pain in the butt, honestly. So um, trying to use that system that is a portable onboard air system where you take it out of the bag, but hardwire everything and hard mount everything in this box so that if it's raining or snowing, um, I don't have to pull it all out and get it all wet. I don't know what the weatherproofing is on it, but this way I can just take my air hose out, plug the air hose in, run it to all four tires, and we'll be good to go. So I've kind of already started putting things together, but this is just an old five gallon air tank, 125 PSI max, um, that I got from Harbor Freight probably two or three years ago. Um, we were young and did train horn stuff, so I have this thing laying around. Um, I have it hooked up. This is the whole, the cord from the air compressor that they came with. Um, it comes with an extension as well. They have these weird fittings, which I'm sure someone knows is a standard for off-road or something, but I'm not too familiar with these fittings. I'm familiar with these ones. Um, unfortunately, this uh, male piece doesn't fit in any of the female pieces I have in the shop. So I ended up just Eliminating this piece, plugging it straight into the compressor, and then this tank already had um, this Schrader valve on it. So I opened up the valve, I screwed it on, and I filled the tank to about 75 PSI just to make sure we don't have any air leaks. And it's still holding air. This gauge is a little bit off, but you can read it a little better. Um, this between the two gauges there is some variance. They are Harbor Freight gauges, so I'm not too surprised by that But we don't have any air links in this system right here. So my thought is Mount that in there Mount that next to it Run these cords However in the toolbox. I know they're way too long, but I don't want to cut and change all that stuff It's just not worth my time right now, and then I can run the cords out and then I can run it to my switch panel. I have an aux beam switch panel so that I can turn the compressor on and off in the cab. And eventually I'll wire in a, uh, 
an air pressure gauge to the cab so I can watch my pressure and make sure I'm not overfilling this. But honestly, this, this uh, air compressor takes so long to blow stuff up that I'm not too worried about overfilling that. But that is the idea. And then I haven't decided yet. I have this hose as well, which is what I'm gonna be using for taking air out of the tank and um, putting it in the tires. So I haven't decided if I wanna do a quick connect on this to make servicing it better or easier or just hard mount it. Um, we will see. So anyways, uh, let's get started on getting this mounted up in there, getting holes drilled and figuring out placement. So here is what I have in mind. Uh, as you can see, it fits back in this corner pretty good. Um, throw this tank in here, throw a couple bolts in it. And then same thing with this. This hose, I'm trying to run it away from the compressor. I have noticed that it gets pretty hot once you're filling up the tires. So for it running long enough to fill this tank up, it's gonna be getting pretty hot. So I'm gonna have to monitor that and make sure that we don't have any issues there. But I did test it. Um, this box, oh, I didn't test it with the gauge there. But this box will fit over the top. That's the plan. See, it's hidden. This is already gonna be here because this is all my fast access stuff for fixing flats and checking tire pressures. Um, so that's hidden. All you have is your quick connect over here or if I end up doing a hard wire, that's all you're gonna notice. So it's pretty good. And then if I end up having some smaller items, I can still throw them back in that corner, whether it's um, ratchet straps or whatever. So it's a quite a nice little package in here. I'm not losing any space by having it because this is already going to be there. So, and that is very tight to the top there. So I'm not losing any space there as well. So I think that package is going to work pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and bolt that in. So those of you that aren't, might not be familiar with the compressor that I'm using, it is, I believe it's a newer one. It's Maddox, it's from Harbor Freight. Um, as you guys probably know, we love Harbor Freight on this channel, but it comes with this nice bag. Um, I mean, it's a free bag that comes with it, so it's not the nicest quality being from Harbor Freight, but I haven't had any issues with it. Zippers haven't broke, none of the handles have torn off. It comes with this extension. Um, it comes with a bunch of different thread on heads for balls or whatever you want to use and then an instruction manual it's a pretty nice little unit i forgot what i paid for it but i will put a link to it in the description if you guys are interested in it and then i'll put a link i guess i'll put a link to all everything i'm using in this video in the description so if you guys want to replicate this um, just order everything from the description or you can find similar stuff the only thing if you're not familiar with these heads or these quick connects for airlines. They do have male and female. So that's a female, that's a male, and these do change. So they have different industrial ones, they have different light duty ones. So make sure that you get the right male and female ends so that everything fits good. So this compressor already comes with this nice base on the bottom and it has these rubber isolators for the vibrations on it. So my plan is I'm gonna unbolt the compressor from this base plate and then drill the same hole pattern into the truck, or sorry, into the toolbox so I can reuse these isolators between the compressor and the toolbox to eliminate vibrations or at least minimize them. And then I should be able to reuse the hardware and everything. All right, so here is all of our pieces. We got the bottom isolator, top isolator, these little shafts through both isolators and through the plate and everything, and that allowed the actual compressor to move up and down separate from this plate. So we're gonna go ahead and reuse those on our toolbox. And then we have our nuts and bolts here as well. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna throw all this in the toolbox kind of roughly where I want it and then I'll go ahead and mark my holes on the bottom.
So I got the compressor mounted in here. As you can see, I spaced it away from everything so that I won't be hitting or rattling against all that stuff when it's on. I got the isolators in, everything's tightened down. That actually was really easy and smooth install. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get my tank fit. I think I'm gonna run that airline underneath the tank like this and then that will put my um, outlet kind of on the bottom down here because then I have I should have some room I'm gonna test fit that and see I don't want to put it in the front because then when we load stuff I don't want to risk hitting that off or shearing it off so I might put it here I might just put it on the bottom too um, that's to be determined but for now I'm gonna go ahead get this tank spaced in there away from everything so there's no rattling and then bolt it in all right I got my air tank in there I kind of had to guess on the spacing and I mounted it a little bit too far out but that'll be okay it's away from the wall it's pretty tight in there it's not touching our compressor at all so we won't have any vibrations on this tank from that now I'm gonna go ahead figure out where I want to get this one line plumbed um, whether it's up or down um, if I'm gonna be doing it down I got to pull this out again but it's looking pretty good all right so here's where we are I got this tank mounted back in compressors mounted um, I got our hose ran down the side here and then it drops down the back corner there and then I got the fitting down here in the bottom so when I want to air up I just reach over the side of the bed plug my hose in that's all tight and ready to go and we have 60 psi in the tank and I don't hear any leaks I'm gonna go ahead and spray it down with soapy water to test them all and see if we have any leaks and then we can go ahead and get our um, air compressor wired into our switch panel so I got the air compressor plumbed in. I kind of just ran it around in circles to use up all this slack I have. The only thing you gotta watch out for is there is an air release on the back of this gauge here. So you wanna make sure that's not gonna be hitting anything or draining your air. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and slide the panel on after I get my cord ran. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna cut these alligator clips off and then I'm gonna run it through our hole down here in the bottom that power point all right so I got the wires ran out the side they're coming out the bottom now so I'm gonna go ahead and look at that it just oh that gauge I keep forgetting about that gauge there all right we are in place it does stick out a little farther because like I said I pulled it off the wall a little farther than I would have liked but honestly that's not too bad for having a five gallon tank in there and a compressor that's that's pretty solid and I got the rest of this to house whatever um, again we are very tight to the top there so we're not wasting any space at all and yeah I'm gonna go ahead and um, run these wires down the bottom of my bed I think I have a hole in there from when I had a CB antenna on here. So I'm gonna go ahead, run them down, and get it wired into my switch panel. So what I ended up doing is the cords coming out of that power point are running up into this stake pocket. Now, these stake pockets have holes on the inside of the bed, and then between the outside of the bed, there's this, this big pocket up here as you can see and there's a hole between the inside of the bed and then that that open area so I ran them through both holes because I can't use these stake pockets anyways because they're covered by the toolbox and then I ran them down so now they can go over to my frame the inside of that frame and I can run them all the way up to the engine bay where I have my switch pro or the aux beam switch panel whatever you call it this bad boy and then I'll go ahead and wire in an air compressor button and wire it into the fifth position it is a new day and we actually got quite a bit of snow last night so I'm gonna go ahead and get the old girl wiped off turned around and 
front end in the shop. So I reached out to Oxbeam yesterday and it turns out it's not recommended to put such a high amperage um, unit on their switch panel. They said that that 30 amp is probably the max you want to do and I guess they do have different relays for different switches and everything is different wire and whatnot. So we are going to just hardwire it into the battery and then have to open and close the toolbox to turn the compressor on and off, which isn't the biggest deal. I'm not too worried about that. Um, that's just gonna be my solution for now. Later down the road, I probably will end up finding a 45 amp relay that I can then run power to and use that as my switch off of the switch panel. But that's a project for another day. So for now, we're gonna go ahead, get it wired into the battery and then we'll test her out. All right, so everything under the hood is buttoned up. I just wired it into a battery connection. And now we can go in here, turn the compressor on. Wow, look how fast it's filling up. It's actually pretty impressive. And this hasn't leaked anything since we were here yesterday so that's pretty slick um, like I said eventually I'll go ahead and figure out a relay system on the inside I'll probably have to get a relay block um, just to clean up all the wiring I have in there but for the time being this is gonna work just fine I'll come out here pop the lid turn the compressor on drive down the trail for a few minutes and then once I get to the end of the trail we have our air chuck on the bottom there plug it in fill up our tires so that should work pretty good I'm happy with it you can slide this bad boy back over yeah now it's hidden out of the way so yeah, that's that. I will keep you guys updated on how well it works if I have any issues. And don't forget to check the bio for links to all the stuff I use to make this work if you guys want to do it on your own rig. So thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.